Jay and Laura TV. We are Jay and Laura LaFoon here to answer your questions about marriage and relationships. And this one... Um, is it really a question? This is not a question, but this is uh, a monumental feat. <laughs> Actually, a Facebook follower shared this with us on Facebook, and I just thought, it's really funny. It's entitled... Happy Wives Club. So in other words, these are six it's a very small club. These are six <laughs> things, gentlemen, you can do to make sure you have a happy wife. So here's the first one. Talk about your day. Every day. Talk about your day. And here's the problem. <laughs> because even those of us men that do, men and women want to talk about different things. Mm -hmm. When a woman says talk about your day, she wants to know about the people that you came in contact with <laughs> and how did you feel about them. <laughs> I, that doesn't matter to a man. A man wants to talk about facts and activities. Um, I had a meeting. It didn't go very well. And uh, activity. Oh, I got to play golf after work. I mean, you know, <laughs> that, that's, that's what men like to talk about. So, yes, and, and the key, guys, to keeping your wife happy is to it, remember, if it's important to her, it needs to be important to you. That's so, the most important right. thing. So when you're talking about spouses, your day, when you're talking about your day, you need to really. But that's got, that goes for both spouses. Whatever your spouse cares about, you need to care about, and not pretend to care about it, but actually care about, care it. about it. So the second activity, gentlemen, that you can do every day to have a happy wife is to kiss every day. So now that's it, why we kiss when we have coffee in the right. morning. Because we don't leave for work; <laughs> we work together in our home, and so we uh, don't get to go anywhere. <laughs> That's kind of creepy. Um, that was a really creepy look you just gave. But uh, one of the things we encourage uh, husbands and wives to do is that whoever leaves the house first for work, um, just take a moment. It's a moment in your life. Walk over to your wife and give her a really nice kiss because um, that, will, that will linger in her mind all day because she knows you're not kissing her with any intention in mind. You're just giving her a nice kiss. So the third is to defer decisions until you can talk about them privately. Yeah. This is hugely important when it comes to kids, I think. You know, when a kid, we tried really hard to practice this when one of our children would say, can I go do this? Can I do that? You know, wait. Let me give back to you on that because your dad and I need to discuss it or your mom and I need to discuss it. That was very, yep. and obviously you're not going to, I wouldn't think you'd make life-changing decisions. No, but without. it is stuff like this, This, you know, um, if our son came to me and said, hey, can I spend the night at Daniel's? Sure, why not? You know, I mean, I don't think about the fact that guess what? He didn't finish his homework, his room's a mess, and all the things that <laughs> Laura knows that need to be done before he can mm -hmm. go spend the night at Daniel's. So yes, deferring those decisions. Fourth, prioritize. Prioritize. So golf, <laughs> and then, 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 oh no, no, not that that way. Yeah, actually, obviously, uh, your spouse needs to be number one um, after your relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, or 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 however spiritual you look at it. This needs to be the number one relationship <laughs> over your kids, over your job, and it's hard. It's hard to make that a priority, but that is key to keeping her happy. The fifth is to express gratitude every day. Yes. <laughs> being grateful you know and sometimes I've seen people do this lots of different ways um, Jay's sister has a whiteboard in the garage which right when you get out of your car you go to the door well there's a whiteboard right there and, and she writes things on there that she's grateful for and so that's a, just a great reminder I have friends who have a, um like you can get those markers that you can write on your bathroom mirrors that it doesn't ruin your mirror I don't know what they're called but and they just write scripture verses on their mirror every day are things that they're grateful for. So I think those are really some really good practices to remember to be grateful You know, and that, that's, that does go both ways because, you know, whether it's the fact to be grateful that your wife is a, is a great mother or she um, is a wonderful cook or, you know, she's just a, a kind person, um, you know, be grateful for that and verbalize it. It's so important to verbalize and it. And the sixth is to accept each other's differences. Nah, I don't agree with that. <laughs> Because we are so much We're alike. We're so different, yeah. Uh, no, early in our marriage, I tried to do that. I tried to change her and make mm -hmm. her more like me. And I'm like, what, why would I do that, okay? Because, um, you know, I, I'm an idiot. Uh, I want to appreciate her for who she is because that's who I fell in love with was the woman that she well, is. Well, and at the end of this, it says, think of marriage like a marathon. It's long, <laughs> you will get tired, and you need the water of motivation to keep you going. It is. Laughing together will keep that motivation and the spark of flirtatious love alive and will add a little bit of joy every day. And that as you age, good. it becomes a lot easier to laugh at each other because <laughs> you can't get out of the chair without going, uh. <laughs> Hey, we're Jay and Laura LaFoom, here to answer your questions on marriage and relationships. We'll see you next week.